Oh, come on, guys. Seriously, what is this? Oh, man. This is from my Oil King review video, isn't it? So I hear that I owe this to Pancakes Types. Well, a shout out to Pancakes Types. Great choice on the screen grab. I don't really look like that, do I? Welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. Well, apparently, now I can be had as a custom tape mod on the back of a keyboard. Specifically, the Tiger 80 keyboard by KBD fans. So, what is the Tiger 80? Well, it's definitely not an animal. It's a custom entry mechanical keyboard that comes in two flavors. One in the standard Tiger 80 guys, as you see right here, and the other in the Tiger 80 Lite guys, as you can see right here as well. It's the year of the tiger, so I guess it represents 2022? I can tell you this though, if you're starting out in this hobby, I want to start with something nice that you could actually grow with, or moving up from like a GK61 or even the KBD67 Lite, this is the keyboard you want to look at. It has a lot of high-end features built into a pretty aggressively priced keyboard. It comes with everything you need to mod it, including foams and also this, masking tape for the PCB to do your own Tempest mod with. Plus, if you want to add a custom graphic on it, you sure can. Just don't put my face on it. It ruins the keyboard. And guess what? This was the shocker to me. Listen to what the Tiger 80 Lite sounds like. Seriously, isn't that ridiculous? And get ready for this. If you decide to go with the cheaper Tiger 80 Lite, I was told it'll be in the ballpark of around 125 bucks for the entire kit. What? Plus, it looks like a modern day Nintendo 64 controller. If you want to be more fancy and want the metal case, or enjoy the sound of metal keyboards in general, the aluminum Tiger 80 can be had for about $225 for the full kit. I still can't get over the fact that the Tiger 80 Lite costs 125 bucks. Well, let's look into this a little bit deeper and see what this is all about. So let's get started. Alright, so what is the Tiger 80? The Tiger 80 is a popular and very functional TKL form factor keyboard from KBD fans. It's a gasket mounted keyboard, but wait for it, it doesn't use the standard pour on gasket strips like everything else out there. It actually uses a modified gasket sock mounting structure derived from the likes of Owl Labs Mr. Suit or even the new QWERTY Keys QK65. When I say modified, it's designed for maximum flex, so check it out. I think this is the most flexible keyboard I have built so far. It even beats out my Glacier 80 in this. The amount of deflection capable is just ridiculous. And it's not terribly soft and squishy either. It's actually pretty well balanced. Like everything these days, the Tiger 80 comes in a nice carrying case, and inside you get a standard PC plate, a hot swap PCB, a plate foam, EVA switch foam, not PE foam, ah, and this, a big sheet of masking tape. If you don't like the standard PBT fans octopus, you can actually opt for a custom by uploading your own image, or an image of me, or not. Maybe it's like the Hippio library mod, but instead of making your keyboard quiet, the keyboard mod makes your keyboard extra cringy. In addition, you get some hardware and some KBD fan standard stabilizers as well. But before we move on to the details, let's take a look at the little gasket socks that the Tiger 80 uses. It's somewhat similar to the little gasket socks that Owlab uses in Mr. Suit and QK65, but it's also different in the fact that these are actually very tall. It's designed to fit into a groove and truly provide a lot of flex. The plate is fairly standard enough, and from what I can understand, the Tiger 80 will be coming with the PC plate as the base. The PC plate is flexible enough that it doesn't really require flex cuts or anything like that as evidenced before. However, the PCB. Oh, the PCB definitely has flex cuts. It's a nice and clean white PCB that is actually on the thinner side. A rough me measurement I took showed that it was around a millimeter or so thick, and because of this, it actually requires the shims to ensure a proper stabilizer fit. The PCB also doesn't feature any perky RGB, but provides LED lights below for a down-firing effect. Why down-firing? Well, because the light version uses a translucent ABS case, so it'll actually help to light things up underneath. As expected, the PCB is fairly flexible as you can see right here. The cut and the thinness I think helps this out. Flip the PCB over and you can see the hot swap sockets. For the Tiger 80, KBD fans decided to use Gateron hot swap sockets versus Kale, but honestly, they work the same here, so no issues. 
The hotspot PCB uses 7U spacebars and no option for 6.25U. Some additional good news. Tiger 80 is one of the few KVD fans boards that actually utilizes a daughter board. So seeing the daughter board here was a welcome surprise and really helps to provide that nice and flexible typing experience, also very even, for the Tiger 80. Let's move on to the case then. Between the aluminum and the ABS, overall design is the same except the case material and about $100. One thing to note is that the ABS case is actually pretty thin, it's not very hefty. Aluminum is average, but nothing compared to something like a KBD-8X, which is more premium. Now, if you see right here, you can see where the little gasket socks actually fit into the case for it to hold up the plate. A nice design since it makes the installation very easy for a beginner. Overall, design of the case is pretty minimal and, and fairly nice because of that. It has nice rounds and chambers that adds a little bit of highlight, but otherwise keeps everything very simple. All right, before we move on to more detail, a quick word from our sponsor, Surfshark. Hey, what are you doing? Good, my VPN's up. Surfshark is an online VPN tool to give you the ability to protect yourself behind a virtual private network. So what I mean by that is that Surfshark gives you the ability to browse privately, hide your location, block unwanted solicitation, and provide you the peace of mind, especially if you connect often to public Wi-Fi at airports and coffee shops. In addition, you're able to access content that is available elsewhere, not just in the US, and let me show you what I'm talking about here. In the US, we are blessed with the most amount of Netflix content, but one thing that is missing is any work by Studio Ghibli. As you can see here, there is absolutely no Ghibli content. So what I can do is fire up Surfshark and change the region to trick the internet to think I am somewhere else. In this case, I'm selecting Madrid, Spain. Now I can go into search and find Ghibli, and lo and behold, all the Studio Ghibli content is right here. I think this alone makes this worth it. So to wrap things up, Surfshark also allows you to connect to unlimited number of devices. You don't need multiple accounts for all your devices. Finally, Surfshark gives you the ability to get 30 day money back guarantee, which is very important. So if you're not satisfied with Surfshark, you're able to contact them and get your money back. Check out Surfshark at the link above or in the description below and use promo code keyboard for 83% off and three extra months for free with antivirus for 27 months. In the aluminum version, the KBD fans decided to engrave the Tiger design underneath the case. At first, I noticed that there was a little circle in the center, so I thought, hey, another space for another foot. Then I realized that it looks pretty silly and weird, and found out that the design of the Tiger is actually a coin? So yeah, don't put the foot there like I did. Now, remember what I said about the switch foam. Typically, we have been seeing a lot of keyboards, especially the new ones, come with IXP sheets. However, KBD fans decided to go with EVA foam sheets for the Switch foam. If you recall my video on the Hope 75, EVA does change the overall sound profile of the keyboard a tiny bit, but doesn't really provide much of that crazy marbly effect that PE foam does. However, it does round out the sound signature and remove some of the sharpness and I feel makes the keyboard a little bit thockier as well. There goes that word again. Since this is a PC plate, it doesn't even use any standoffs whatsoever. I decided to use the play foam for convenience. Imagine trying to put in switches into this little thing with nothing there. It's going to be a nightmare of a crazy plate flex and switches flying out and we don't want to deal with that, right? So let's just keep it in. And now the tape mod. The Tiger 80 comes with the tape included and it's designed to be used with it. What is interesting is that the tape is actually very, very thin. It's much thinner than the typical masking tape you'll use. So let's see how this turns out. And although the standard one is the octopus, I mean, I have to use my own, right? Somebody sent me literally a one in my face. So here we go. For switches, I use the Oil Kings. I mean, this is the custom tape included from my Oil King video, so I have to use Oil Kings. It just seemed very appropriate, don't you think? I also found out what Oil King actually means, but that is for another time. For the stabs, I used the provided KBD fan screw in stabilizers that I clipped and looped. They're pretty basic and standard, but they work, so you know what, let's use that here. 
Finally, the gasket socks. This is how they fit, right on the edge of the tab. If you look, the tab itself is also cut, so this is probably the reason why the keyboard has so much flex. I really like the new gasket sock designs. It's just easier and there's no millions of gaskets you have to put on there and, and whatnot. Here is another look at the flex of this board without any caps on. It's pretty wild how much this thing actually flexes. Speaking of caps, I decided to try out the new ABS Double Shot Neon caps from PPT fans. And honestly, I was shocked at the fact that there's so many good keycaps coming out from all over the place now. The PPT Neon is unique that it's actually transparent. You could see through the first layer. PPT Fans offers both Double Shot ABS like this one and Double Shot PPT. And based on my experience with it for this build and some of the other ones recently, I do recommend it without any hesitation. So check it out. Well, enough talking about this board. Now let's take it for a quick spin, shall we? So the first thing I noticed was that the sound from the keyboard is surprisingly tame. You get it? It's Tiger 80. Sounds tame. And I guess fairly normal <laughs> sounding even with the EVA switch foam and the tape. I feel like that was potentially the intent, but what I was also expecting was a little bit more pop. As mentioned before, EVA switch foam doesn't dramatically change the sound of the board like PE foam does. I do feel that the tape mod is super thin, so it has very minimal impact. Also. Given that the case is pretty cavernous, it's actually pretty big inside, it does exhibit a small amount of case ping as well by the spacebar. So let's make it better. So first of all, I took the entire thing apart again and looked at the tape mod. I decided to take another layer of tape and put it on top of the original one. Now the case. Given that the Tiger 80 is a flexible board, I didn't really want to lose any of that flexibility by shoving in something super thick in here and then just kind of blocking it. So I decided to go with some simple polyfill. I've had a lot of good luck with the O-ring mounted keyboards like Bakaneko's and the Freebird TKL with polyfill. It does help the case overall, but it doesn't actually impede the flex. So let's use it here as well. Finally, I swapped out the switches for something a little bit different, a long stem pole design. I'm using the Duroc Palms for this. I think it should help increase that pop that I'm looking for. Let's see how this all worked out. Yup, that sounds much nicer now. It has a nice pop and also that spacebar sound that was a little funky before is, is much nicer. Now, are you ready for this? This is actually the surprise of the video. What about the light version? It's a cheap one, so it should sound cheap, right? Check it out. Wow, first of all, the translucent purple with the translucent keycaps actually reminds me of the Nintendo 64 controllers, or even an old school Game Boy Color. It's an awesome look. Then the sound. The ABS case is thin, so I expected some cheap sound to come from this, but rather, the ABS really brings forth a very nice and rounded sound, a warm sound. And with the switches and the tape, it just sounds really good. And this is coming from an entry $125 keyboard kit, guys. This is not even like a 60% or 65. This is a full TKL. 
Plus, regardless of aluminum or ABS, the flex is very strong. So, what are my final thoughts? I would say that if you're just starting out in this hobby, or you have something like a KBD67 Lite and you want to upgrade, the Tiger 80 is definitely the one to consider. If you like the heft and the sharper sounds of metal keyboards, then the aluminum one is your pick. If you like the nostalgia of an old Nintendo, or also prefer a warmer sound, then Tiger 80 Lite is perfect for you. For me, this thing is actually going to stay this purple Nintendo Game Boy color. I still can't believe that this keyboard kit is going to be just around $125. I, I hope I didn't just tell KBD fans to charge more. My final suggestion is to use two layers of the tape and you go with a long stem pull switch. Then you got yourself truly a winner. A board that will help you get into the hobby and potentially be your daily driver for a really long time. And if you have more expensive keyboards, the Tiger 80, especially the light, can be an office keyboard that you use. As usual, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.